All right. So in this chapter, we're going to pick up where we left off from the previous chapter in that we're going to create the back of the business card. Session Skate Shop is in a goofy location and customers often complain that it's difficult to find. So we had the idea of putting a map of the area where the skate shop is located on the back of the business card. Now typically for the back of a card like this, I'd put it on a second artboard in the same document as the front. However, for the sake of this course, we'll do it as a separate file. Now one quick note before we get started is that I'm going to show you a bunch of stuff in this video, so it could run a bit long. I apologize because I typically try to keep them shorter, but there's just so much to show you, so bear with me through this one, okay? I'm going to start in the Start Workspace, and I'm going to click the Create New button. We're going to click on the Print Category, so we are going to start with a print product, and I'm going to come over here and switch to Inches, and I know the size is 3.5 inches wide by 2 inches high, and we're going to make sure that we choose the Landscape Orientation. This product does bleed. We already know that from the doing the front. So I'm going to increase the value of the bleed to an eighth of an inch. Make sure that we click the Keep All Settings the Same button. And then I'll click the Create button. Now I'm going to fit this to my window by pressing Command or Control Zero. And I'm going to start by grabbing the Ellipse tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down Shift as I start to drag. And with the mouse still held down, you can also hold down the space bar to reposition this. And I'm going to move this at about this location here. That looks pretty good, I think. Maybe move it up a little bit. And I'm going to come over to the stroke panel and change the weight to five points. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to set my fill color to none and the stroke to black. That looks pretty good. Now, this is representing a traffic circle. And so what I want to happen is there's going to be a road coming in from the lower left and then extending out here to the right. Now, I'm going to have to split this path though because it's not a complete circle. There's a couple ways I can do that. I'm going to click and hold on the eraser tool and one option I have is the knife tool. Now the job of the knife tool is to cut a path where I drag through it. So you'll notice with this tool, if I drag through this circle and I let go, if I switch to my selection tool, you'll see that the end result of that operation is that I'm ending up with two closed paths. Not what I want in this case. So I'm going to undo twice to go back to my circle. And let's try the scissors tool. Now the scissors tool works a little bit different because all I need to do is click on a path and it's going to cut the path at that location. So I'm going to click once in the lower left corner here and you'll see that it adds an anchor point there. And then I'm also going to click right here on this right anchor point to cut the path at that location. And you may not see it right away, but you'll notice if you switch to your selection tool and you pull this out, you'll see that I cut the path at that location. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that piece because I don't need it anymore. And now I'm going to grab my line tool. Now remember there's a street that's going to be coming off like this. And so what I'm going to do is using the line tool, I'm going to click right here and drag down and to the left in a diagonal pattern. Now as you draw these streets, feel free to extend it way past the bleed. I want to make sure that it goes all the way to the bleed and we're going to fix that extension later on in another video. Now I'm going to move over here and I'm going to click here and drag to the right, this time holding down my shift key to create a perfectly straight line that is, you know, horizontal. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to connect those straight lines to the curve. I can do this in a couple of different ways. The first way I'm going to show you is using the join command. I'm going to do that right here and using my direct selection tool, I'm just going to click and drag across the two endpoints to select both of those anchor points. And if you go to the object menu under path, we can choose join. You'll notice the shortcut is command or control J. And when I choose that, you're going to see that now it is a complete path. It's joined the ends of those two open paths. Now if I move down to the lower left, I'm going to deselect everything because another way that I can do this is using the join tool. 
Now that's typically going to be found under the shaper tool here. If you click and hold, I'm going to grab the join tool. Now where the join command is really efficient, but what it does is it creates a straight line between the two endpoints. The join tool creates a more natural connection between the two open paths. So the way this tool works is I'm literally just going to kind of scrub across these two endpoints like so. And when I let go, you're going to see that it automatically joined those two open paths and it did it in a very natural way. So that looks pretty good. I have one more diagonal line to draw. I'm going to go ahead and grab my diagonal line and I'm going to come up here into the upper right corner and I'm going to click and drag to draw a diagonal like so. And we'll go maybe about there. I think that looks pretty good like so. Okay, so that's all the diagonals I need to draw. Now while I have the line tool, let's draw some straight lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to go past that street here and I'm just going to drag across to create another straight line like so. That looks pretty good. Then I want a straight line coming from the top here straight down to the bottom. That looks pretty good. And then I want another one that is going to come from this street right here. It dead ends at this street. And I'll just extend it down here past the edge. That looks good. And we'll do one more. This time I'm going to use the pen tool. And what I'll do is I'm going to click once over here. I'm going to shift click once over here to create a perfectly straight line. And then I'll shift click once again. That looks pretty good. Now let's draw some curved lines. So I'm going to hit the escape key to tell the pen tool that I'm finished. And I'm going to click and hold on the join tool and I'm going to grab the pencil tool. And this particular line, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start way up here. And the pencil tool basically just follows your hand as you draw. Now, I'm going to double click on this tool real quickly. And you can adjust the fidelity by dragging this slider. And so I'm going to leave it right about here, which is more on the smooth end. And that's going to smooth the path as I draw it. So I'm going to go ahead and click and drag. And I'm going to just kind of drag a curve down here like so. And you know, remember, I'm using my mouse, so it may not be perfect. And then what I'll do is I'm going to come right from this street. And I'm just going to click and drag to draw a curve like so. That's the other street that's in there. That looks pretty good. I like that. Now, a couple of things we can do. If the path you've drawn isn't as smooth as you'd like it to be, what you can do is you can select it. So I'm going to select this particular path here. And I'll do it with my direct selection tool so we can see the anchor points. If you click and hold on the pencil tool, you can grab the smooth tool. And what this tool does is if you kind of retrace your path, it tries to smooth it out. And you'll typically notice that you end up with fewer anchor points after using that tool. Now, one more tool I want to show you here is the eraser tool. And a good example here is down here where I've extended this street past this diagonal street. And I don't want to do that. I want it to stop at the diagonal street. So with my selection tool, I'm going to select this line. And I'm going to grab my eraser tool. So I got to get to that by clicking and holding on the scissors tool and grabbing the eraser tool. Now the eraser tool, if you hover over your artboard, you can make the eraser bigger or smaller using the left and right bracket keys on your keyboard. Those are the keys to the right of the letter P. And the reason I selected that line first is so that only that line will be affected. And using the eraser tool, I'm just going to kind of erase the end of this and I'll stop when I'm like halfway through the diagonal stroke. And when I let go, you'll notice that it terminated that line right there at that point. If you didn't select a line first and you drag through it, you're going to obliterate everything in its path, which is not what we want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that. Awesome. We are off to a great start here. Now that we have the streets created, we'll move on to formatting them in an upcoming video.